Hi, welcome to the Jansen Art Studio. Welcome to Painting Tapestry of Florals. So far, you've seen some of the other videos, hopefully, especially if you're new to this book. You've seen some of the other videos that we provided and you read through the book just a little bit. Those other videos that we did, I shot this uh, this last year. They, they go along with the Paint It Simply painting process. They're pretty much the same in all of the uh, books. Some are just a little bit different, but they give basically the same information. And now what I do for the next uh, hour and a half or so is what I'm going to do is show you basically some of the things that are going to uh, apply to this book of painting the tapestry florals. So I'm going to show you in this first lesson how I'm going to approach some of the different flowers that are used in the lesson. So you get an idea of watching in real life what my brush does, what my colors look like. You have hundreds of step photos in the book to uh, to look at, but there's nothing like seeing it in real life, I feel. So I'll give you a you know, an hour or so study here of flowers, and then we'll go over and we'll paint a few scrolls uh, as we uh, go into the um, the fourth lesson. We'll we'll practice some scrolls, some scroll work that you'll see in uh, some of the other paintings. So to start out with, we're going to have some flowers. Now I have all of the paintings that I did here up in front of me, actually over here onto the side here and all of the flowers and what I try to do in the book is just give you a flavor for the tapestry flowers. The tapestry flowers like I said in the in the introduction of the history of this these are from the area of Albusson which is outside of Paris these are uh, tapestries and what they uh, what the artist did what inspired me to call these tapestry flowers or Albusson flowers is that uh, artists used to paint gigantic um they were for matter for basically for lack of a better word it's like on a cardboard they called it a cartoon they're beautiful paintings um and they were done so that the needle artists can follow them when they weave the tapestries and and so the the painting of it was kept kind of in mind what you're doing you're keeping your colors uh, not real blended, kind of in, uh, as a matter of fact, they get kind of clear color definition, which helps, uh, you know, the needle artist see where to make, you know, color def definitions, gives them a, an idea as they go, these needle artists go about building these tapestries. Um, and so they uh, painted, I mean, artists would paint these things and sometimes quite large because these would be carpets. Sometimes these would be hung on, on the walls. And the tapestries really, uh, you know, you've got like a 500 year history of tapestries. They go back for quite a long time. And so there's a, a wide variety of flowers. There's a wide variety of scenes. In book, in volume two of this particular series, what we're going to do is we're going to paint some uh, cartouches where we're outside frames of tapestry and put scenes uh, inside like the tapestry did. But I wanted to show you how to uh, how to do some flowers. Now I did a tapestry book, very, very successful tapestry book about 10 years ago. And I used a bottle of acrylics and, and uh, some, uh, some lower quality uh, acrylics that we had at the time. And I kept the techniques very simplistic, but I did them in layers. And now I'm going to paint them wet on wet, more like what the tapestry artists would do when they created the cartoons, the paintings that the tapestry artists were following. And in, in doing so, though, I do soften out my flowers a little bit. I show you a picture of a uh, an original tapestry uh, cartoon, and you can see very definite lines and color differences between the... Um, between the actual colors that are used to create the flowers. Now what I do is I do a wet in the wet technique. We're going to do an olive It's basically what's called an olive prima technique, which was popular uh, when the tapestries really started to gain in popularity in the end of the 19th into the 20th century, when they really started gaining popularity. Uh, they um, we they used more of all the prima painting techniques artists in general so we're going to follow some of those techniques and I'm going to soften them out because we're selling the painting we're not teaching we're not giving a map for someone to paint the, the tapestry so I'll soften them out but I love the compositions I love the way uh, they put them together uh, they put together vertical units um, they had different words for it we have this one that's right here this is real pretty they had different words for it like this particular unit going up here this is a Renzo unit and the Renzo unit uh, is any kind of vertical de uh, um, uh, unit that 
has an intertwining vine that goes around and you would see these uh you know done around columns and and as as a frame for parts of cartouches and stuff we'll do a heck of a lot more of those later on you know as we as we study a little bit more of the tapestry because i think you know like the first book i did with this people just absolutely are enjoying the tapestry but there's going to be different kinds of scrolls which we'll talk about in the next lesson but there's different types of flowers and you're going to see all different kinds of flowers and painting styles of flowers and so throughout the book what i'm trying to do is present some of these flower styles to you these are a little bit more advanced flower styles uh the these get a little bit easier this one here uh, a little bit easier yet and then all the way over here let me grab this one one of the first lessons that we have here is a rose and some blossoms and before putting scroll borders out there we're just going to put a simple little blossom border out there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to paint some roses how to paint some blossoms and then how do we get a little bit more complicated as we go through some of the lessons so you get an idea now as we're painting here this is my palette this is the palette I used to paint the book um exactly the palette it's the same palette i used to create all the dvds this year this palette is over a year old and i fill it up and it looks like i have to fill up my yellow green there just a little bit more what i do is i just mix it up at end all of this i've just added a little bit of extender to it you don't really need the colors to stay completely globalized what we call globalized where they have a lot of extender in them and a real long drying time because we're painting tapestry we paint one flower at a time you should you know you should have that flower done completely you know inside of tw 20 minutes i mean most of the paintings that are on here will take me about two hours for a real big painting so 20 minutes open time per flower is really a lot is more really than what i normally use but a lot of you that are practicing you'll probably want to have a little bit more open time you get that just by mixing in extender paint with it uh, at the end of your paint day, just make sure you mix in a little bit more extender or mist the surface um, and, you know, the lid as you go. So set up your palettes like we, we tell you to set them all up. Add a little bit of extender to it that doesn't need to be perfectly globalized or anything. Just add extender and paint away, okay? And if the color starts to get a little tight, just mix up a little extender. And all I do at the, uh, the end of my paint day when I'm all done, just to make sure everything is all really good, I just take a little bit of extender. Pour a little extender in into this and just mix it up with your brush here just like this because this white's getting a little stiff. When I came down when I came down into the studio today and filming this, a um came down into the studio and I realized that uh, I hadn't filmed for the last three days and I realized that I'd left my palette completely uncovered down here for three days so you're looking at it what it's like when it's completely uncovered and you can see it gets a little stiff here and all you have to do is we don't want that white to get in there so we just lift that out um, but all you have to do is just if it gets a little stiff stiff like this is just take a little extender and mix that in so that's a really good thing to kind of show you here with the palette and so i like it to be just a little bit liquid not too liquid i do like the you know different techniques if i'm painting the pure all prima and strokes and stuff and that, but uh um you know really thick all the prima roses and stuff i like my paints to be very stiff and i do that just by leaving them set out just a little bit okay so when you're going to go paint a flower or anything into the into the tapestry generally what i like to do is i like to uh, put down some color before i go to work into it now in in a lot of other acrylics we put down just you know like a, a layer of extender that was a technique we used for years and years and years i don't really use that very often anymore because that extender just thins out the paint and causes everything to be slippery and just slides around. When I'm going to approach a flower like this, what I like to do, sometimes I sketch it on. Sometimes I will add a little background color uh, first to an area. Sometimes I work right and wet on wet. I will change up my techniques just a little bit depending on how I want the flower to look. Now, if I if I add background first to something, it is going to get very, very soft. On the tapestry here, I want to have my edges kind of clean here. And so, especially if I'm going to be doing some like stroke flowers and stuff like you see here. So I'm not really going to want to have a lot of that on there. So what I'm going to do is just take some color. Let's say we're going to paint like a white rose here. Let me just paint one through here with a white rose. Now whites, 
you can you can the whites all approach a white different from each particular painting from painting to painting to painting here or if i have a color like this one here in this i will have my white rose in here will be a little bit different as you see it here it leans very much to the red violet side here uh this one that i have here i love this particular flower in this one this one as you see it up close you'll see there's a lot of transparency to it here and you'll see a lot of colors working through it see the greens working through it the reds working through it those are all just models and models of color and we have to put those in first before we go in there and overstroke with any kind of white and if you want this transparency or translucency to it you have to use your whites uh, a little bit more thin um, than painting not transparent just thin okay so the big thing is, though, we have to put something down to paint into. That's what we're doing in, in, in all of this. So in all these examples that I have here, we'll put something down to paint into. Now, when you're deciding on painting a flower and you're working the colors here for the book, the, there's a color that is very, very important, and that is your red-violet. This red-violet color, I'll put some right down here. This red-violet color that you have, it's a very powerful, it's a dark color, it's cool. It is the coolest temperature color that you have on your palette. And so what we want to do with this color is we want to use it anywhere that there's a shadow, anywhere that the flower will go undergo some kind of shadowing. Um, if it's going to sit underneath or the back side of something or to, you know, we want to make sure we see the red violet and you're going to see red violet in there. So when I look at this one here, you can see that red violet in the center, red violet right down in here through the shadows. As the warmth of the flower comes up, you're going to see more yellows and you could have yellows. The green on this palette is warm. That yellow green is warm. The yellows are warm. The naphtho red light is one of the warmest colors on the palette. So you have those for warmth. But the red violet is one of the coolest. And so that's what we can use in the cool area. Let's say, for example, I'm going to paint a rose here. What I do generally to start a rose is I start right down into the real... Uh, the bowl of the rose. So basically, you know, on your pattern, you're going to have a rose and you're going to have some petals out through here. Now, how much you use your pattern is, is up to you. I don't like to use a whole bunch of pattern because if I use a whole bunch of pattern, that causes me to fill in everything exactly. And if you're new to painting, yes, you need a pattern. If you're, uh, if you've been painting for a while, what I do is I divide the rose up into three main circles. So I have its three circles here. This is the center here this is the bowl and then this is the line out here for the outside of the bowl so what i'm going to do generally is i'm going to put this nice cool color back in here into the the center throat of the rose and i will soften out generally i will use my fingers like this and soften out the color as i go back up here towards the top but i really want to have a lot of nice heavy color in here into the center of the flower then i generally will put some color out here to the bottom of the bowl like this Okay, so it stays out here nice. It's a nice, cool color. Uh, sometimes for contrast, I will take that color, like you'll see on this one here. I will take that color and I will push it over to one side if it's over to a shadow side. I'm going to look for some variation and some interest. And what I do when I paint is I don't want to go with one big long stroke. You don't want to go just all around with one big long stroke because that's too much. So what you want to do is short stroke it. You're going to see me say that in the lessons after lessons. Short stroke everything in everything is shorter little strokes try not to do big long long strokes now if i'm going to paint a white rose here again i have a i have an a, uh, an option here to uh, use the color a little a uh, little bit yellow or a little bit green i'm going to put a little green in here and you say wow you know green into a white rose yeah green is beautiful into a white flower it's beautiful. This could be a rose or a blossom or anything. I'm going to take the color, and my since mine is a little stiff, I'm just going to mix it up with a little extender here. If you notice, I didn't even clean my brush, and I'm going to toss a little green in here. This is going to be a warmer color here that's going to help warm up the front of this flower here. And maybe I'll put some out through here. We'll let it get a little transparent out through this area out here. Okay. And... We want that transparency. 
that come out just a little bit. And of course, you can have all different kinds of edges to your flowers. And if you look at it, we don't want to get the, with the tapestry, I like to leave them very soft out here. So sometimes you'll see this very dark out here. Sometimes you see more of an edge and a stroke. You, you don't want to have perfect, perfect stroke petals. With your first one, I let it happen a little time because this is probably where you are. And on a dark background, it's a, it's, a nice, it's a nice practice one. But later on, these edges and these petals are going to become softer. Uh, it's a, you, don't want, you want to have some heavy strokes into the center and softer as it goes out. Lost and found edges. So we want it a little softer as we go out. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull down and take some white. Let's put a little yellow in that too. Matter of fact, we can even just toss a little Hansa right up here into the front of this flower. And you can see already you start to get a little bit of uh, um, interest to it. But notice how I am short stroking. This is very important. I want you to get casual and get relaxed. If you start your flower really stroked from the beginning the whole flower will stiffen up okay so how you approach it as an artist is we come in here and we just kind of wiggle in i wiggle in color i'm going to wiggle in a little color like this wiggle this in here onto the sides wiggle this in here i don't want to stroke 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 because if I wiggle like this, this creates modeling, what we call modeling, and I can use my finger to help that out as well. But this creates this modeling in here, which is what we want to play against. So then when I do come in here and stroke, the stroke isn't competing against another stroke, okay? So if I come in here, let's say for example here, if I use this, if I base coat like this, stroke, 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 and then I come in here and I put a stroke, even a white stroke, I come in here to put a stroke, you don't see the stroke as much because it's competing against all the other brush movement in the same direction, okay? But if I come in here like this, and this is so, this is how you paint. If I come in here like this, let me just take this, and I model this up. Let's say I model this up like this. So I see this movement of color coming in a different way here. Then when I come in and pick up this white and I stroke, your eye sees the strokes more so than it does through here. So it, the strokes have more power to them and that's what it is. So you only stroke the flower towards the end or when you're looking at the finishing of the flower. The rest of the flower you're gonna model. So we'll come in here and we'll just model. And maybe I wanna have a Let's, you know, and I look for air variation. Look at the flowers for variation. Maybe we'll put a little lighter green out over here like this, just a little green and white and yellow. We'll just model that up and model that right into here and model some of those colors right over here like that. And that'll look, that'll look pretty good. And you can come back and reset what we call in painting restate. You can come back and reset and restate shadow colors again. You know, short stroke them. You know, short stroke some shadows out here like this. So I'll create, let's just say we're going to create this as the shadow side over here. So I'll create a little bit of shadow side over here to the rose, just like that. We'll deepen that shadow in the center here just a bit more. So you can paint out, paint in, put more in, take some out. You know, you can... You can control a lot of things, but you want to model up your flower just like this. Model it up so that you have this, this look of cool color, shadow color, warm color. That gives you something to, to play on, to play on. So what now is I got to do is I'm going to start lightening it up. And that's where these pretty little highlights and everything are going to start to come. When I do start the lightening of the paint, I'm just going to take some warm color, maybe some yellows here. Could be yellows, could have greens. I just need to get warm color into my brush. Model it up. And when I say model, I mean tap your brush. Don't stroke your brush. See how I tap my brush very short in through here? This is modeling. This is modeling the brush here. So I, my colors are all modeled on my brush. This is the main painting technique of the Paint It Simply program, is modeling the brush. Then letting this little soft brush just be modeled and then just start having fun. Don't stroke with it. Now, the other thing we're going to do is the edge. So what you do is you have this model brush here. Then what I do is I put out a little dollop of white, what you see right here, okay? 
and let me come in a little closer here we go so what I'm gonna have is this little bit of white just like that okay and I'm just going to tap right like this just tap right this and just walk right into that white and I pick up this bead of white see how I well, I should hold it here see how I pick up this bead of white and you can tap and pick it up on any side just pick up that bead of white it's that bead of white I use on its chisel here the little soft chisel that I do to start to draw the petal so I'm just going to draw that one right there maybe tap into a little more here and draw the edge up draw the edge up and you can just reload you can pick up if you reload if you pick up more it gets lighter so I'm just going to come right around like this and pull the the edge of the flower here this way then I can tap in I can pick up a little color if I want this rose to be more white I'll just tap in model that brush up so it has a little bit more white into it and then I'll pull down but I want to short stroke it down I don't want to long stroke it I want to short stroke it see how I build that up like that Okay, now if you want the rose to be round, it's got a curve on this side and it's got a curve on this side. But see, I came down right into here. See where I came down right into here and I hit the shadow and I know I'm going to hit shadow. If I come back up here and touch it again, I know I'm going to have a lot of dark. So that's why I always have a paper towel in my hand and I just wipe when I get too much or if I hit the shadow too much and I just take it out. Now these paints... The secret of this also is these paints. These paints are heavy pigmented, as you can see. They can take out, so I could take that shadow color out immediately. If you're using a lower quality bottled acrylic, you can't do it. It's impossible. You can't do it because there's not enough pigment in them to do this type of technique. So I bu I'll build this up a little bit, and you can see I'll just kind of short stroke and shape the bowl of this rose up with many smaller strokes like that just keeping it light and fluffy maybe not quite so much white over here we'll just let this and just kind of work this together this is where it gets kind of pretty you can paint up and soften those little light marks i can tap in and pick up more if i want to define that petal up a little bit more you can do you can uh, lots of different ways and of course look through the flower look through the book and see some of the different ways in which I'm doing it as you come out here you can you can go out first just generally and just add some movement out here just remember if you hit in here too far if I go in there like that I'm picking up that red and it's going to carry right back out there to the outside so you know that's something that you can you know I'll just go ahead and let happen as I'm coming this way I'll just go ahead and let it happen and I realize I will be lightening it up again or touching it sometimes I let it happen sometimes I'm a little bit more specific it depends on the flower but the biggest thing that I want you guys to do is the technique here is to model it see how we're building it model it build it then stroke it okay then we're gonna stroke it and give it more color here so we'll model it build it and then stroke it now sometimes I will with some of the easy flowers like on this one that's right here I keep it more easy and you can see this flower doesn't have as much quite as much modeled interest as some of the other flowers that are showing you and that is because I go immediately out to start stroking the petals so the petals don't have quite as much interest to them and but that's okay this is an easier flower as you get further on in the lessons you'll see I will model it several times like this and even start to build a little bit of the of the petals up before I come in with my final light so I'll do this several times lightening and building and then I will start to actually start to pull strokes so I start to get a few streaks into the flower as I start to build the flower and then I'll come out start getting lighter and lighter each time I pick up more and more white get more white out here and then this slide into the edge like this with the white that gives me more white to drop down say draw another layer of petals here wipe the brush pick up some more because I picked up a lot of I hit some shadow there wipe the brush pick up some more maybe draw another petal here wipe the brush pick up some more drop it down just divide it down what I try not to do is I try to have the the same kind of feeling but the smallest petals of the rose are going to be in here then they get a little larger a little larger and larger yet so you're just slowly building here 
Now I'll pick up even more white, and this is where, after I've set it all up, this is where now I can start to come to stroke the flower. So I just carefully lay that in and stroke it down, and you see I picked up the red. See the red that was there? So I have to make sure I wipe my brush, go back, pick up some more white, and let's stroke it again down this way like that. Wipe my brush, pick up some more, and stroke it again. Now I'm putting on more heavy this, this petal heavier here. Sometimes I will work, if I think I get too white here like this, I just wipe my brush like this, I start down here and I stroke back up the other way, lifting because you've got nice heavy paint underneath there. You can put the shadow back up here up on the front as well, giving a slightly different look to that. So you can play back and forth. That's the beauty of this paints being slightly thicker you can play back and forth and you can lift colors off. So now I've put on these streaky little petals here like this. And the tapestry, the cartoons, there it actually leave just real heavy stroked structures of, of color. I don't like them quite as heavy, so I soften them out a little bit. And I just get a little softer as I go around like that. Let's maybe have another little stroke right there. You could, you could put more green into that. Let's just come down here and model in a little more green into that so we get a slightly different color. And that's a kind of a pretty little look to that over there with a little green into it. As you come out here to the edge out here, you can get a little bit lighter. Now, if you're on a light value background, a light value background like this, some of your final strokes out here will not show up. And that's why you see a lot of the flowers surrounded by green leaves, especially if they're on light value backgrounds. The green leaves are what gives you the darkness for your flowers here. So you'll see that darkness that comes in here with the green leaves. So sometimes before, and you'll see me in some of the paintings, before I get too much to that final stroke, what I'll do is I'll come in and I'll shoot in some of my green. This just happens to be the, the uh, uh, dark uh, toned green off the palette here. And I'll shoot in some green. Now look what happens when you do that. You get what is this this um, simultaneous contrast, contrast of the flower. All of a sudden, this flower starts to come very white. Usually into a green shadow, I like a little cool color, which in this case is the red violet. So I put a little red violet, model that into the uh, into the uh, green here, and you get this cool color. And all of a sudden, you can see I. This is what's going to make the contrast, if you want this flower to have more contrast up here, is leaves. You can put that in, and then later on you can turn these into leaves, any shape of leaf or anything like that that you want to have. Sometimes leave the background, sometimes not, but uh, you can shape these into to leaves later. And again, go through the lightening process on those leaves. You go through, pick up some yellow greens and some whites, you have that and then you can go through the the slow uh, lightning process that you'll see in the step photos here of the leaves and they'll start to get lighter and lighter and lighter start to add your whites into there pulling those out and start to build up these leaves the same the same way in strokes and with the first lesson the leaves are done just very very simply they just get a dark and then they just get strokes of light strokes of light coming back in to the inside here and that they don't have to be uh, quite as perfect because the background's a little darker. But on the other lessons and stuff, you'll see sometimes I won't lighten them up. I will just let the uh, um, the uh, shadow do its its part, and so and it stays very very dark. For example, this little guy right here. Again, you'll see that there's just a base coat and a shadowing on the leaf, and the shadowing on that leaf is to make that really that edge of that flower get lighter. That's what it's there for. So I'm looking for contrast. If if an edge of a flower is disappearing too much for me, then I, I will contrast it with the leaf, okay, the nearest leaf. So 
You'll see that in the lessons as you get going. But then you can come back in here and see I don't even clean my brush. I don't even have any water out here. I don't clean my brush. I just wipe my brush and I go from color to color to color. That gives better harmony to your painting. A lot of acrylic artists just rinse their brush and go to the next color. You don't do that as an artist because uh, that keeps your colors too clean, too independent, and your painting becomes sterile. You dirty brush paint. You go from one color to the next and you carry color. So yes, I might have a little bit of green that'll show up in here. But it'll go because there, it'll make this flower and this petal go together because guess what's underneath that? Green. And that's how we're in some of these things where I get the transparency that you'll see later on. Like if I wanted to make this petal look completely transparent, I'll even physically take a little green in here and stroke it into the edge of that petal just like that. Then come in and shoot a little bit of white out here onto the edge like that. And then maybe overstroke it a little bit more right in here with some white. And I can start making a transparent look to the petal. There's a bunch of different ways you can do it. But the thing is, I want you to get a little more casual. So I will use the edge, after I put those greens on like that, I will use the edge coming around like this. Just kind of let it dance around and pick up some model, some white, some color here and start to build your flower, your petals up a little bit more. Sometimes letting them have a little more streak, sometimes not. Maybe put a little, let's put a little bit of that warm yellow. Let's get even a little bit of our other red in there which we never added just kind of model this up get a little bit of the modeled kind of pinky color here don't stroke big long ones just kind of short stroke this around kind of clean up the edges there soften that back edge back up there with any kind of real soft light color will soften that because your background's light back there unless you put a dark leaf over there if I did too much, this is the beautiful thing. Watch what happens. If I did too much and I go, whoops, I closed off that center too much. Just tap into a little dark, little red violet and push the center back in. These paints are nice and thick. You can do what we call pull them around and push them around. So if I wanted to, to come back out here and say, okay, I want some more shadow out here like this, I can just come out here and pull or I can push out to the tip. I can push out some color to get some different looks to my flowers here. I can do all different kinds of things and you'll see where sometimes on a flower to keep a flower nice and fluffy. Sometimes I will be pulling color, sometimes pushing color to do different things. You can get very, very complicated when you get into a, a flower petal that's like this. You can see the different layers that I'm putting in. So I, if I leave a lot of value difference and a lot of light dark difference between my petals, then I will get more uh, separation, more interest, more streaky. That gives you some of the different techniques. And throughout the uh, throughout the book, one of the things I'm going to be doing is walking you through some of the different flowering techniques that we have here. Let me put these off to the side here, and uh, we'll come back and look at what well, I can uh, look at these softer ones here that you get in the first lessons of the scrolls here I put the color on very kind of transparently and then I slowly build to the white but still I'm not even when you look at this if I if I go out here and grab pure white I'm not pure white you can see that I'm not pure white on that particular flower here okay I don't I don't have a pure white on that particular flower and what I have is it, it painting into some of the wet paint. So you'll see it's a building of color and then I slowly, this is what I do. So I take a puddle like this and I slowly, as I paint through the flower, I slowly make it, each time grabbing more white, this pile is slowly becoming lighter and lighter and lighter. And so I start out here and then I get a little smaller, a little smaller, and a little smaller, slowly coming right into here. So if I wanted to make this flower lighter, I would put more white and come in just one more time right in here into the center and I would make that flower even lighter yet. Okay, so, but I wouldn't go, if I go take this color and if I go put it way back out here, I flatten the flower. See how the flower becomes instantly flat. You don't want to do that. You don't want to uh, drag that color absolutely everywhere here. 
And so the, you want to look at your lightest colors, your contrast colors come more to the front of the flower. So I, if I were to build on this, this flower here, I have this going here. If I was to continue and build on this, I would continue lightening, but I wouldn't drag this white as I'm building this white here. I wouldn't drag this white all the way, all the way back out through here. If I do that, then I flatten my flower. So see how that light color is, it's right up in here into the center. Now that's a very big mistake that a lot of painters do. They start painting with white, then they get their whole flower white. And that'll be, that will most likely be one of your first mistakes you make with the tapestry flowers. Why do I know that? Because I do that. And I watch my students do that. They start painting and they take that same color all the way around that flower. The lightest colors belong only up here into the front. And then you let them kind of fade away. That's what brings the front out. The second I take any of that light color and put it back here, I start to flatten that flower out. It loses its interest and it doesn't turn quite as well. So you just model that in there like that. You can use a light color, but not as light. You can use edges here, but not as much. And I use just a little corner of the brush to draw little petals. Just a little corner to draw little petals if I want this light and airy look to uh, this particular flower. Let's go over and let's let's talk about some blossoms as you as you come through here. Blossoms uh, blossoms paint exactly the same way, and especially as you get more advanced here into some of these others, you're going to see as we get into more of the other lessons, you're going to see more colors coming on for more color interest. The blossoms in the early lessons will start out very simple. And then they'll slowly get heavier, uh, harder. And one of the, how do they get harder? They just get the harder by having more and more colors onto them. Basically, what you have is you have to set up your your blossom color. What is your main blossom color here? So let's uh, say, for example, here on this, let's just do like a little orangey type blossom. So I'll take up some of my orange off of my color here, and I will add. Let's just do a couple of them here. Let's just add a little bit of extender to it. So I'm just going to casually base in just like this where I'm going to have these little blossoms here casually. And sometimes I'll take my finger and I'll soften them out like this because remember too much movement with the brush and petals have to compete against that. Then generally what I do after I set a color is I look for shadows and accents. Now, sometimes I'll apply accents, sometimes I apply shadows. Well, shadow, generally your shadow is always what? What's the darkest, coolest color on our palette, in our painting? Red violet. We'll sneak in a little red violet into here, here like this, maybe even soften that with my finger. I love to do, you'll see in a lot of the step photos, I soften a lot of things with my finger. Why? Because it gives it a different look than my brush does. So I have this color coming in. Now, maybe I want to have a little bit of a, you know, I'll, I'll have like a little purpley violet color or something here. So I'll take a little blue and the red violet and I'll put that together. I'll get myself kind of a little purpley color here, a blue violet color. This is an accent color. So I'll pick up an edge or something like that and I'll put on the accent color that I want this little violet to have. Maybe in a few areas a little more violet. I, I look for this accent modeling kind of color. It's a variation of the color. So again, just like with the rose where I set up all these modeling of color, okay, set up modeling color, set up a shape, set up, set up your three circles. Here you know where the center is, you know where the petals are, the first thing here. And you can, if you want more contrast, you can darken up your center a little bit more here if you want. That's always, that's a judgment call on how much contrast you want to have. Then so I set up the shape, set up the center here on a little blossom. Then I start looking for modeling, you know, modeling interest, other colors that might be appearing here inside this little flower. Then I'll come back down here. Here's my orange. I don't have to worry about warming the orange up. The orange already is very warm. Maybe I want to go to just some, some white. But orange and white, or one color in white, is kind of boring. So usually I'll model it with something. Like maybe we'll take a little yellow here. We'll model that. We'll model right up into the orange here like this and the, into the white into here like this. And so, so through some petals, what I do is this will be your general stroking petal 
that I'll do smaller blossoms just like this. I'll reach on beyond the, reach out beyond that color, beyond that that flower, that 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 little ring of color that I put on. So you generally don't see it. You see the petal edges that are going to be out there. So you generally don't see where that little ring is. So I generally keep that little ring a little smaller. Maybe short stroke them a little smaller up here to the front and maybe a little longer into into the back. Now I'll show you some definitions here of petals and how you turn flowers here in just a second. But you can, as you can see, as you stroke some of these on, you're going to get some different colors here. And then I can pick up more white and lighten and lighten some if I want to put more light on. That's always a judgment call. It's, it's kind of up to you. So I will build petals, come around. Sometimes I reload for each one. Sometimes I don't. What I try not to do when I'm painting a row of blossoms that I want all the blossoms to look a little different. What I tried to do is paint them all a little different. So one I may stroke every single time, change, you know, load the brush and stroke, load the brush and stroke. And the next one I may stroke three quarters of the petals all the way around without reloading the brush so it becomes softer. So they'll look different. I mean, it's each one is different. That's my goal as a painter is to add interest and I add interest by painting some of these a little bit different but generally once I model it up then I come through and I start setting in other colors sometimes I come back with accent colors or other strokes of colors afterwards and set other colors underneath and around you'll see that in in some of the uh, some of the uh, the step photos and, and you know that I have in the uh, in the paintings you'll see that when I do centers and stuff, generally I use the corner of the brush. I model the corner of the brush, like I'll mix up and you'll see all the step photos with it. But generally a, a good way to do that is you take, like here I'll model, here I'll do a green. A lot of times I use the two yellows, the Hansa yellow and the toned, uh, the base toned yellow. And I'll model the green here and the Hansa yellow together. And so I have one kind of green color and I'll use just a corner of the brush and tap around on the inside of that little blossom like that using just a corner and just tap around and the modeling will come out and every center will always come out a little different there and then after I model that like that then I add just a little bit of white into that just tap into this right in here so you're going to have that white and you might want to add a little touches of some light maybe to the front side to the light side here don't go all the way around sometimes I will Sometimes I don't, but it puts a little bit of a shine or a little highlight on there. Sometimes I'll do it as a little stroke. You'll see a little difference in each of the lessons as I go through all different kinds of flowers. But it's good for you to see on the palette. The palette is where everything's painted. So even when you look, here's the difference. It's very, very important. Even when you look right here. You look right here on this in this palette. You don't see a long stroking uh edge you know of, of colors what you see what you see is tapping areas of tapping you don't see this on your palette does that make sense you don't see that that's what I look for in with my students when I come around and I see a lot of this it tells me they're stroke painting what you're doing is you're blending see the difference between the blended and the modeling of the color it's the modeling of the color that's going to make the flowers really really pretty that's going to cause a little stroke of something to come off. You know, you can't control that. That one comes off. That's going to give you all this little variation to your flowers. And see all the little variation that I have to the flowers here. And the color variation. Look at the color variations that are there into those flowers there. So, you know, and sometimes I will put in the light. See, well, the light is very small here in the front. And if you don't see that light color back through here. And sometimes, like here, you can say I took the dark and stroked it afterwards after that was all done. Okay? So you you working these kind of techniques, I keep the, the strokes towards the very end. I kind of put in the object. I model it. I shadow it. Model it up. And then start building and start peddling it. And that's when I really start uh, 
to, to stroke it. And then keep the leaves kind of simple as you start to work some of these leaves. Keep your leaves a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit more onto this, the simple side and vary it. This is one of the, the objects that I absolutely love is this tulip. And when you look at this tulip that's here with this, you can see the green. See the green underneath here now? See the red violets? Red violets and browns underneath in here. And, and yellows modeling up into there. Then a little bit of white's taken and stroked through to start to build the shape of this particular flower. But white doesn't have to go on every petal. This one doesn't have any on it whatsoever. So you kind of use your, your white kind of sparingly. So sometimes I will... Uh, I will paint the petals like this, but you see, I started out with this real modely circle, and when it's all done here, and this flower's back into its shape, you can see, you don't see that real circle underneath there, but what happens is some of that circle helps you get that petal definition that's under here, and of course, these petals will show up more when, so when you're on a darker background. The background's going to be very important for the look of the flowers of what you want uh, these particular flowers to, ha to, to have, okay? So whenever you start any kind of flower that you're doing here, any of the flowers that you're doing, you're going to start, you can sketch in first. Sometimes I will start with a shadow. Sometimes I start with a base. And I work back and forth. There is no set color progression. I'm going to give you ideas for the color progression. But in all the Prima, when you approach it like this, if you need it, paint it. There's no base coat shadow highlight. Get rid of that. That's all gone. That's decorative painting of the old. I mean, that's the, that's just not the old. The oldest is what we're doing here now. You see, the base coat shadow highlight became very popular at the end of the 70s, the 80s, and 90s, and still up into 2000. Uh, the old original painters didn't paint that way. They painted what it needed. So sometimes they start with a shadow, sometimes they start with a mid-value color, sometimes with a highlight and work backwards. It varied. It varied depending on the look. And the artist would vary those techniques to get more interesting flowers. And what we have done, what we become as flower painters is painting all the same way, base coat, shadow, highlight, and then all our flowers don't have the interest. So vary it up. Don't get locked into a little thing. And don't stroke too much onto your palette. Model it up. Take any kind of color that you want to, uh, that you're going to paint with and model it up. And then go, and then you can go from there, okay? So, and then add your little interest that you need. And if I wanted to add more petals up here to the front, this is the thing right here. Just come in here and push right into that and pick up a little edge just like this. And let the edge of this soft little brush right here, let this edge draw your petals. So I can come up here and add the edge, and I can just tap right into that edge like this to soften that if I want, and add the look of extra little petals in there if I wanted to have petals come up here to the front. The beauty of all of this is to just use the edge, the corner of this brush, any with any kind of light color like this, and that allows you to come anywhere into a flower, anywhere, like I can come right into here, and I could use this little corner like this, and I can draw more petals and just kind of pull down just a bit. I can add more petals to my rose anywhere that I want to add just by using the tiny edge of this, this little brush. It's a beautiful little brush, and it just makes painting these flowers so wonderful because it could do so many things. Sometimes I'll take that little edge and I'll draw the bottom of the rose up like this too and pull up and soften that to pull out this way. So I get a different look to that rose as well this way. So there's all kinds of ways you can do it. Look to the step photos there for that. Start with your colors. Model it up. Make sure you have your shadow into it. Watch the consistency of your paint. This is the other thing. Look at the palette that I have here. See how heavy this paint is. See how it's not running around. My extender right there is running around. But my colors themselves here, they're stiffer. See how much stiffer these colors are right here? Like that as I'm picking them up. I paint with thicker paint. I don't paint with watery paint. I paint with thicker paint here. You can see that. See how that stays modeled right there like that. So if I take that color to model something and I come in here, I can really paint a leaf very nice and modeled here. Really nice with a color that's like that. With that heavier color. So your colors are heavier. Don't use them thin. Use your colors heavier. 
You can have extender in them, but don't thin them out too much. I think that's the other problem that I see a lot in classes, and we'll kind of stop you there right now. Start to, you getting some of those colors a little bit heavier, not quite as thin. Model it up, shadow it up, start your highlights, use the corner of your brush, and use your finger to soften everything out. That's some of the main techniques that you have on here. And don't stroke till the end of the flower, okay? So with that, start into your lesson. Start practicing some of those flowers. It's going to take practice. It's going to take practice. A few hundred roses is what I always tell my students. If they do get better, they do get better. But if it's going to take a little bit of them. Your tapestry, because we're painting this kind of more casual than we are some of the others. Your tapestry will look different than mine, but it'll all look pretty if you don't rinse your brush and model your colors and let some of this color plate happen. Okay? So on to the first lessons, lessons one all the way through there, and then I'll come back to you with the uh, scroll lesson. I'll show you some of the scrolls before we start some of those, okay? Have fun. Start painting your flowers.